in Florence. It's no surprise that James Sherwood's exhibition of two centuries of Great British Bespoke is attracting the interest of the press. Branding enthusiast Angus Cundy knows what journalists want and likes to give it to them. Fabulous. <laughs> May I call yes. you Angus, Mr. Yeah, of course, please. Is it Cundy? Cundy. Cundy. This is fab. He probably doesn't know what a blog is, but the fashionista who's got him by the mannequins has got one to write and questions to ask. Are you the one that also has a line that's made in China, I read about? I hope uh, not. No, what did we say? Well, what China? I was saying was that we have opened two shops in China. We okay. sell English cha tailoring to the, the, the wealthy Chinese. Now, did you inherit uh, Angus Cundy from, from your father, or did you set it up yourself, or is it a family business? Or what's the name of your... Um, well, the name of the company is Hen Henry Poole. Oh, yeah, right. And uh, I certainly okay. didn't set it up, because it was no. set up in That's 1806. That's with an E, Poole with an E. Yeah. Yeah, so no. we are the... Uh, we are, in fact, the oldest, uh, we are the founders of Savile Row. Oh, this is fantastic. Oh, what? Oh, fantastic. <laughs> you made the smoking jacket for Edward VII. Correct. Okay. And there's a story to that. Do you want me to tell it to you? A very brief one sentence, if you may, if you can. Oh, one <laughs> sentence. It's a pity you can't hear the whole story, because the Americans love to say that the <clears throat> tuxedo was invented by a Mr. Lorillard. Laurie, L-O-R-I-L-L-A-R-D. Lorillard. Is all this on your website? Yeah, it is actually, yeah. Oh, so well. But I'll, let me finish my story, because yes, okay. I'm sure you'll be amused. He was standing yeah. um, uh, in front of a fire in Tuxedo Park, and I'm that's how... I was standing by the fire. But the amusing thing is... Tommy Nutter is a story for any fashion writer, and his former partner is happy to talk. Sexton is an authority on the history and politics of British tailoring. He's an old Savile Row fixture, whatever the new rules say. 70s was the decade of the, the French, the 80s was the decade of the Italian, and the 90s should have been the decade of the Brits. But economy and worldwide recessions have set us back. We are now just catching up, if you like. So I think it's time now. James Sherwood's exhibition is more cultural than commercial. Safe territory for a royal visit. His Royal Highness Prince Michael of Kent lends his weight. But he isn't the only big gun here. Oswald Boateng, OBE, arrives fashionably late to marshal his neighbours and talk the talk. Here now for the first time to see all the tailors together, talking together in that way, is, is phenomenal. Very, very good. Now, it's going to be a tough shot, this, because there's a lot of us. <laughs> and here in Italy, could you imagine this is happening in Italy first? I know. That's, that's, uh, that's amazing. It's interesting that we've only been able all to come together as tailors in Italy, and we haven't been able to achieve that in, 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 in London. These men are the Savile Row brand. The media are on hand to capture the moment. It wouldn't be Italy if there wasn't a fairy tale ball in a Renaissance palazzo on the banks of the Arno. It may be hard to measure how successful a trade festival like this is, but at least the tailors themselves have seen how impressive Savile Row can look. For now, it's enough that the Italians, their old business rivals, have taken the impeccably dressed Savile Row tailors up the red carpet. Mm -hmm. 